Hello, I am Mario Grijalva, Director of the Tropical Disease Institute at Ohio University. Each year, the Tropical Disease Institute visits a different region of Ecuador. Each region has different challenges, but we always have the same objective, to combat the spread of Chagas disease. This four-part series will explore how we create a consistent, systematic approach to collecting data in the field and then aggregate the data into a body of research that will help us end the spread of Chagas disease in Ecuador. The countryside of Loja sits high in the Andes Mountains, while the province of Manabí rests lower along the coast of Ecuador. The different climates, as well as the different flora and fauna found in each region, have created different lifestyles among rural Ecuadorians. Information distinguishing these cultural differences will play a key role in designing a national strategy to combat Chagas disease, and may ultimately determine the success or failure of such a strategy in any given region. A prime example of data being collected by the Tropical Disease Institute is the various housing strategies being used from one region to the next. Throughout history, people in rural communities secure their homes, family, and farmland from predators. In Manabí, the convention is no different, although the approach is unique to the region. I use this plant as a fence to keep my animals close to the house, for security, so the animals don't get out. It's easy. You just dig a hole and plant seedlings from the plant in the hole. That's all. Then they grow. In a few years, they'll make their own seedlings and they'll drop off on the side. They get thick, like over here on this side. You need a machete to cut them. It's the best way to keep my animals out of the field. It's better than barbed wire fences. Animals always find holes in those fences. And my dogs don't bark as much either, because they can't see people walking down the road. But the use of a pinuela plant as a barbed protection from one animal aggressor does not assure protection from every unwanted attack, or even the most dangerous. Chinchuros know no boundaries in Ecuador. A stack of bricks or a pinuela fence, both are a perfect place for chinchuros to breed. All they need is a safe place to live, away from predators, where they can feed regularly, be that on the blood of a rat, a chicken, or a child. Unfortunately, statistics have yet to determine whether these infestation points are a natural barrier for humans, offering the chinchuros an alternative to the human home, or simply a bridge for the chinchuros, providing a stepping stone from the wilderness into the house. Over the last 12 years, the Tropical Disease Institute has been collecting data on chinchuro behavior. Not only does this information help to better predict how to combat the spread of Chagas disease, but it also provides a foundation for other studies, often thesis projects from universities around the world, collectively adding to our arsenal of data. Here in Manabí, they have pinuela fences that promote the presence of triatamines in the peridomicile. That's the area surrounding the house. In Loja, they don't have this. In Loja, the insects go straight into the houses. This is because the ecology between these two places, between Manabí and Loja, is different. From what we've been able to observe, the triatamines in Loja are found in the sylvatic habitat, in the wooded areas surrounding the houses. And more importantly, they're found in the interdomicile habitat that's inside their houses. Because of construction, the insects have more places to hide inside these houses. And people in Loja also keep their animals inside, which is a major food source for the triatomines. In contrast, here in Manabí, the peridomicile area, the area surrounding the house, is where the problem lies. Triatomines cannot hide inside these houses very well, so the triatomines travel from the sylvatic habitat to the peridomicile area where they find hiding places to live. Then, if they need food, then they'll travel into the houses to feed, but they'll come back to the peridomicile area for safety when they're done.
The collection of data continues each year in every community in all the regions of Ecuador. Every house in a community is identified. Questionnaires are administered to collect statistics concerning building materials, sleeping conditions, and human proximity to animals. Uh, it's very important to study the vectors of this disease because um, there isn't a vaccine yet and the treatment is uh, very complicated once the disease um, has been already in the person for some years or for a time. It, it's only helpful when you treat the patients at the beginning of the disease. So uh, the only way we have found to uh, control the disease is to control these vectors. Different people, different lifestyles, but they are all threatened by the same disease. Using a long-term, multi-layered, systematic approach, the TDI is combating the threat by trying to understand the behavior of the disease in order to effectively disrupt the process. Each study brings us one step closer to reducing the spread of Chagas disease. But it is a complex systematic process, and when your research area includes several regions in Ecuador, data collection takes time. In the next three episodes, we will demonstrate how we utilize a strategic approach and a well-prepared team to gather data in the field in order to continue this fight against Chagas disease. Join us, will you?